I'm very, very pleased to announce that the first baby clone uh, is born. She was born yesterday at 11.55. Well, we're going to continue our discussion of the uh, concept of human cloning today. Joining us in our studio and testifying on the Hill today is Bridget Boisselier, who is scientific director for a private company called CloneAid. Thank you for joining us. Kids can look up. You can Google it. Viewers can Google it. Right. We cloned the first sheep. And then years after, we would clone the first human girl, Eve. And a friend of mine, Bridget, she's uh, one of the scientists responsible for that. She's also a member of the Raylan Movement. I was born in Jersey. Okay. And raised in South Florida. There it is. Where did Canada come from? That's where I was cloned at. <laughs> Story for another I'm very, very pleased to announce that the ba first baby clone uh, is born. She was born yesterday at 11.55 uh, a.m. in the country where she was born. So this will not give you more details about the location. She, she's fine. We call her Eve between us. You knew that, of course. Some suggested it, and I thought it was a good idea, actually. You won't have the right name. And, you know, for a long time, I thought that the, um, this press conference will be with the baby, the parents, the scientists, everybody surrounding me and uh, having pleasure announcing it, I'm alone. And there is a reason to that, is that um, it hasn't been easy to face the world with this announcement. And we've, uh, we have been discussing with the parents the last three months how we would handle today. And uh, they decided not to show up yet. They will. I hope they will. And I wish them well. We started really to work with human eggs in January of this year. So it took us three months to finalize, and this is very short, and that's why I said, is it luck or is it hard work? I do believe it's hard work. And, but we had, uh, our really, we had really good success very quickly and refined the technique for human eggs until spring, where we started to have implantation. We had 10 implantations, and five of them during the first three weeks uh, were terminated spontaneously. Five others were successful and are still successful. The first one so was um, uh, born yesterday. The next one is due in Europe next week. Well, we're going to continue our discussion of the uh, concept of human cloning today. Joining us in our studio and testifying on the Hill today is Bridget Boisselier, who is scientific director for a private company called CloneAid. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for your invitation. Sure. Tell us uh, first what CloneAid is and what the company is working on right now. Okay. So CloneAid is a private company. We founded that four years ago, got the funding to really have lab uh, last August. And so now we have three scientists working uh, almost full time in a lab here in the United States with the major goal for us to, to produce a human embryo by human cloning. Why do you want to do it? There are several reasons. The first one is that what am I doing it myself is just because I think I, I had to do it. Four years ago when I, hear, when I heard all the, the uh, establishment saying this is so bad and all these things, I said I have to do it and show that this is only a baby. A little baby, the belated twin of an individual, and that's it. It's not a monster, it's not all, you know, what we have been hearing so many bad things about this baby. And, uh, so we decided to, that, to do that four years ago. Now we are on the verge to have this first embryo. And when do you suspect it will happen? I don't want to be rushed into saying a uh, date. What I'm saying is that we are in the process of doing it. We will check every possible defects before, so we'll need to 
uh, make sure that the, the embryo is per completely viable and uh, before doing any implantation. So the soonest we could have an implantation is mid-April. It could be in a year from now because we want to make sure that uh, this baby is completely and perfectly healthy. As we did yesterday um, with our segment on human cloning, we'll be taking plenty of calls over these next 40 minutes. And we will leave the phone numbers on the bottom of the screen for Democrats, Republicans, and others. Our guest for this segment is Bridget Boisselier, who is a scientific director for a company called Clonaid, also is a visiting assistant professor of chemistry at Hamilton College uh, up in New York State. And uh, we'll point out that uh, she has a PhD in physical chemistry, PhD in analytical chemistry, and uh, you are from France, correct? Correct. Right. And uh, working here in the U.S. now. You're going to be testifying on Capitol Hill today yes. uh, at a hearing that we will be covering on this issue. What are you going to, what are you going to say? I'm going to talk about the babies. I'm going to talk about the parents, the parents-to-be and the, the father of the baby who are, who are trying to clone and what are his motivation. And it's, uh, I will read a very moving letter from him to, to, uh, to the congressman. I will also talk about my motivation and how, how dedicated I am to this project, whether it's done here or abroad. I, we will have to move, if there is any bad decision in the Congress today or uh, the, in, in the coming uh, future, uh, we will have to move, but we'll move. We will not quit the project. So that's uh, basically what I'm going to say. Um, and I will also address basic freedom, freedom of, of science inquiry and freedom of reproduction of cho and choice of reproduction for any individual. As we mentioned, it's a House subcommittee hearing. We'll cover it on tape uh, due to the length of the House and Senate sessions today being live. And uh, I'll get you an airtime on this uh, hearing once we can figure out our overnight program schedule. We have From a spiritual standpoint, it, it makes me very, very nervous. Is it true? Did scientists really create a human clone? Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. Kevin and Jeanette have tonight off. A Florida scientist who believes aliens created life on Earth says she made the world's first human clone. The baby girl called Eve was born yesterday in Hollywood, Florida. But so far, the scientists at CloneAid have refused to identify the parents or provide a picture of the baby. Scientists say the child is a clone of her mother, a 30-year-old American woman. Scientists say the parents are proud of their genetic creation. The parents are happy, and I hope that you remember them when you talk about this baby, not like a monster. The doctor is a member of a group called Raelians. They believe the Earth was created by extraterrestrials and that cloning leads to eternal life. The cloning claim has triggered a lot of talk, even right here at home. News Channel 8's Michelle Parker talked with Iowans for tonight's top story. So what are people out there saying, Michelle? Well, many say it's very hard to believe, and others say it's just not right. Controversial group. Researcher Robert Bienkowski reads the latest about a group's claim of a cloned baby and voices doubt. We don't know about their credentials. We don't know where they did it. The sample is done. CloneAid says the story is true, but Bienkowski says cloning animals still isn't fully understood. It's very difficult to clone mice, even more difficult to clone cows. Uh, the animals that have been born oftentimes manifest developmental abnormalities. News of the supposed newborn clone leaves many Iowans uneasy. It should be just left natural. I don't think that scientists should be interfering with this sort of thing. I think we've overstepped our bounds as human beings. I think cloning goes a little over the edge. Not everyone is against it. I think it's pretty cool. Technology's cool. Uh, I'd like to see more of it, I guess. Binkowski says society needs to decide how far it really wants to go with cloning humans. That's a debate for everybody, not just scientists or politicians to take part in. Now, Dr. Binkowski says therapeutic cloning is something that doesn't have as many ethical implications. Therapeutic cloning is when there's an attempt to clone organs like livers or kidneys to replace diseased or damaged ones. Okay, certainly a controversial topic. Oh, certainly. Thanks, Michelle. A team of independent experts will examine the baby. They'll test the girl's DNA to see if she really is a clone of her mother. Those results should be back sometime next week. Meanwhile, President Bush is calling on Congress to ban all human cloning. Right now, human cloning is allowed in the United States with FDA approval. A Gilmore City...
I'm very, very pleased to announce that the ba first baby clone um, is born. She was born yesterday at 11.55 uh, a.m. in the country where she was born. So this will not give you <laughs> more details about the location. She, she's fine. We call her Eve. I think cloning humans is inherently a bad idea for sort of, if I may, evolutionary biological reasons. And that is that if you were to, if you clone yourself, if this were successful, this kid, this baby, would not be the combination of two people's genes. And so this kid would be inherently falling one genetic step behind, uh, if you will, everybody else in kindergarten. Everybody else would be a result of a mixture of genes. A clone would be the result of, of a single set of genes. Glenn McGee is director of the Center for Bioethics at the University of Pennsylvania and the author of the human cloning debate in Generation Genome. Dr. McGee was with the FDA two years ago when it shut down a clone aid lab in West Virginia. He joins us now from Philadelphia. Doctor, thanks for being with us. My pleasure. First of all, why did you shut that lab down in West Virginia? Well, I wasn't responsible for the decision, but uh, the real issue is one that has pl plagued not only Brigitte Bossillier, but CloneAid since the beginning of this effort, and that was false promises. Uh, $200,000 were taken from a city councilman in West Virginia to bring back his dead son, and CloneAid had set up a lab with Brigitte Bossillier at its head above a daycare center in West Virginia. And when the FDA investigated, uh, what we found was a lab that was roughly at the high school level. Uh, and indeed, that issue is with us again today. Uh, if it's possible that Brigitte Bossillier and unknown scientists, unknown obstetricians and others in an unknown country were able to successfully give birth to Eve without the kind of hundreds and hundreds of mistakes that we saw, uh, mistakes and medical problems that, that we saw with the birth of Dolly and other cloned animals, uh, then I, I think that suggests that uh, we may be entering a new world in which just about anyone can make a clone, although I myself very much doubt that she has succeeded in this effort. All right, let's talk about the, the cloning in a minute, and we'll talk about Eve, but let's talk about uh, Boisoulier and this group, uh, the Raelians. I, I want to talk more about them, okay? Let's talk about their background. First of all, where are the credentials? Are these true <laughs> scientists? Um, give me the background. Well, um, um, I, I, I want to be nice. Uh, let's be blunt, though. Um, the, the cadre of people who have uh, claimed that they will clone a human being within the next three or four months includes a number of scientists and others whose uh, published work on this area of research, cloning, making children through assisted reproductive technology, uh, is about altogether 10 or 15 pages. Uh, we're not talking about a distinguished group of scientists who have worked together. In fact, when the National Academy of Sciences, at the request of Congress, brought not only Brigitte Bossillier but others together uh, just a year and a half ago, uh, they were overwhelmed by how little those scientists involved with this effort actually know. Uh, what we know about this group is that they've taken a great deal of money. They have come nowhere in the published literature uh, forward toward creating a monkey clone, let alone a human clone, uh, and yet here they are out of the blue with no baby and no mom uh, making the claim that they've successfully had a human birth. I think it is it, literally unbelievable uh, that such a thing would happen. All right, just for the sake of fairness here, uh, Roiselier gave us an exclusive interview a couple hours ago when uh, talking about uh, her expertise, the group's expertise. This is what she had to say. Let's listen to this and come back and talk about it. People have been talking about defects for this reason without checking what we know about in right. IVF of well, human you know, people. And we know, we have experience, we have 24 years of experience on assisted reproduction of human, and we've benefited from that. So we benefited from a lot of work that has been done on calculating, of course, because my expert, the, the one the technician who did the embryos, actually have been doing more than 3,000 cow embryos before touching any human eggs. 
Dr. McGee, she's talking about her background, that they have uh, 24 years of experience in reproduction of humans. Yet, let me just read something from the Boston Globe. This was an article that did something on the Raelians, this organization, this sect uh, that they are a part of, talking about its uh, founder, Claude Vorlon, the former editor of a French auto racing magazine, founded the sect in 1973 after saying that he had encountered green-skinned beings emerging from a flying saucer during a mountain hike. And according to the Raelian teaching, the aliens explained that humanity had been created through DNA technology and then whisked uh, him, Claude, to their planet where his sexual needs were serviced by female robots <laughs> and where he met Jesus, Mohammed, and Buddha. Okay, so here we are, though, talking on a serious note, this story, I mean, a lead story. Um, is this irresponsible experimentation or are these credible scientists? You know, you read things like this and you kind of sit back and think, why are we talking about this? Yeah, I, I think it's crazy. I mean, to be blunt, I, as I said, I'm trying to be nice, but uh, this former professor at Hamilton College in New York, uh, who has had some involvement with cow cloning science, it's true, uh, is a part of a group that is basically a combination of a cult and a website. And uh, there is little reason whatsoever to believe that they have successfully cloned a human being. Uh, more importantly, um, I think it's very, very clear that uh, this group has made a number of claims about the safety of human cloning. Uh, you just heard Brigitte Balsillier talk about 20 years of experience and how that would let her examine early embryos. These are claims that are so flagrantly scientifically false uh, that no responsible scientist would ever make them. We know, for we are absolutely certain that it is very difficult to imagine successfully making a human clone because of a number of specific problems with primate cloning that don't exist with mice and cows and other kinds of animals. She mentions nothing about that. We also know that the examination of the embryo, just the embryo, uh, has nothing whatsoever to do with the, for example, 9 to 20 births on average that you get for every healthy clone that will have a missing limb or a missing piece of the brain or a massive genetic problem. Uh, one leading uh, geneticist at uh, MIT, Janish, uh, Professor Janish, has said that there has yet to be born a single genetically healthy clone. So, you know, forgive me for not taking uh, Professor Basselier with no proof, no baby, and no real science at her word. Well, Glenn, we're going to have to leave it there. It will we'll be interesting to see if indeed we do see that baby, if we do see the science, and if DNA tests prove that this is for real. Glenn indeed. McGee, Penn Center for Bioethics. Uh, always a pleasure, doctor. Thank you. Cheers. Where are you from? All right. I was born in Jersey. Okay. And raised in South Florida. There it is. Where did Canada come from? That's where I was cloned at. <laughs> <laughs>